and we are back. So, last we left off, the Fellowship had found themselves in the sewers beneath Sealberg, pursuing some supposedly missing individuals, at least three fingers, and who knows who else, um, possibly young Theodore, and maybe Mr. Gold, maybe not, who knows. Um, but regardless, down in the sewers, they managed to track where they thought that the party was taken, judging from the amount of blood and the scaven tracks that they were able to um, to follow. However, as they were approaching an offshoot to escape the sewer tunnels, Marius noticed that there were some bubbles following them in the oh so lovably named stew or raw sewage that was pumping through these tunnels um seeing it he decided to take the initiative and shouted for Seamus to loose a bolt into the stew and when he did he revealed a gargantuan creature a unholy abomination of some kind that writhed around and attempted to crush and eat the party. However, due to some very good roles, everyone, including Nathaniel, <laughs> one of the uh, one of the uh, the bold bastards, um, made it to safety in an offshoot Skaven tunnel that apparently is the exact same tunnel they needed to take to leave the sewers and continue on their path. After Marius tossed a torch back, exploding the sewer, and who knows, doing what kind of damage to the structure itself. Um, Nathaniel. It's dwarven made. It is dwarven made, but there is a gargantuan creature thrashing around inside, so we'll see. <laughs> it's so, what, who knows? Um, Nathaniel did sever one of its tentacle like appendages that was reaching out for um, Seamus and Marius. And in a rather crazed state, was hacking it to pieces um, last we left off. And he is like breathing heavily at this point. And he, he doesn't look right in his mind anymore. Um, he looks like he may have shattered at some point. And uh, unlike the three of you, he is not used to being underground. And he is not used to seeing things like that. So this is where we're at. What are we doing? Raggedy grabs Nathaniel and little slap on his cheek. <gasps> Nathaniel, you, yes. please, look at me, you, yes. you're okay. Hey, the lady I'm... blessed us, we, we're okay. Okay, okay, uh, give me a leadership. Well, no, you had that critical success on your leadership role. Mm -hmm. So I will let that carry over, and he kind of, um, <sighs> <sighs> And he is no longer broken. And he begins to calm down. Um, I didn't realize he's broken. I'm really glad you let me carry that over. Yes. Yeah. He His resolve shattered at the last moment after yeah. seeing the creature and everything else. We must, <laughs> we must find Sylvain. I, I need you, Nathaniel. Your lord needs you. Yes. You, yes. Made him so pr I, you have made me so proud. <sighs> let's, let's continue on. And we are moving forward, I'm assuming. Um, who's in front? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm assuming I am, unless someone else wants to. We'll have Marius leading. He's the one who can see in the dark, after all. Seamus yeah. still has... Dragon has uh, got a shield and sword in hand, so he can't yeah. carry a torch. Seamus still has a torch um, mm -hmm. that he can use. I'm going to assume you took the time to reload your crossbow, so you would have had to oh, put yes. your torch down to reload and, and all that. You're a very skilled person um, mm -hmm. with ranged weaponry, and I feel like you could easily manage to do these things um, rather quickly. So you do so and um, continue forward. 
Um, there are still the shouts and screams coming from the tunnel behind you and the smell of burnt filth, which is somehow worse than what it was before. But as you keep moving forward, um, there's only one direction to go at this point as there's no going back. The trail is staying steady, and then at some point, after who knows how much time, it could have been, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 10. Um, time, it gets a little weird down here in the dark. Um, you would know that, Marius, from prior experience. But you can see, Marius, that this tunnel is beginning to widen, and it gets to the point where... All of you can walk um, two abreast comfortably. And then it hits what looks like a junction tunnel, Marius. And it's strange because you hit it, Marius, and you recognize it. Is it the mine? It looks like one of the mine shafts. You can tell by the by the bracing on the sides that this is one of the shafts from the uh, from the Sealberg mine. Okay. Do, do I recognize like what shaft? Um. Well, let's let's see. Um, why don't you give me a uh, give me some kind of roll here? Um. So you, you want to use your geology guess... roll? <laughs> I've got. <laughs> I do have. I do have lore geology. I don't get used that. Nerd. Right. I also have a uh, secret science minor. Um, okay. Here's here's what we're gonna do. All right, we okay. can do this. We can do this. Um, what is your secret science under? Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. Okay. Go ahead and give me a. How many points do you have in the uh, secret science? Uh, 37. All right. With you having worked in the mine, I'll give you a plus 20 to this roll. Go ahead and make me a secret science roll. All right. Um, that is going to be a 24 out of 57. Okay. With the plus one. Right. 24, 34, 44, 50. Okay, three levels of success. All right. Marius, as you're the first one to breach into this part, um, you you recognize the, the shaft. It's one that was collapsed a long, long time ago. In fact, Seamus would recognize this shaft if he knew what to look for. As this is the very same shaft that collapsed the uh, the time that the two of you were together in the mine, where you had to um, dig out some people from an explosion. You think that you're on somewhere further down where the collapse happened, and you know, Marius, that it was never um, they never reopened the shaft after after the collapse they deemed it unworthy of reopening there weren't they weren't pulling up as much um precious metal as they were before and they just decided to cut their losses and move on to something else but you would know that marius and you would know that you should be almost at the end of this shaft okay um I'll relay that information to Seamus. I'll just quickly say, Seamus, this is the mine shaft we were in years ago. Helping those miners who got stabbed or poisoned or something. Oh, it makes sense now, Marius. <laughs> oh, doesn't it? And in it, with it being part of the mine shaft, you would know that it's it's very large. Um, you're looking at yeah. uh, at least at least thirty forty feet wide, um, and somewhere around fifteen twenty feet tall. So it's braced relatively well, 
even though this part of the of the mine is is human made this isn't um dwarven a dwarven shaft but it still should it should hold well enough um are we still following tracks there are possibly tracks um Seamus want to go and give me another tracking roll I got a Whew, that's a bad one. Um, a seventy-four out of fifty-six. Okay. Do you want to re-roll it? Or you want to? You want to just leave it? Uh, I'm gonna leave it because I don't. I don't have a lot of fortune points. Okay. To pull from. All right. Um, you at some point you just lose sight of like the blood trail that was present. Um. And you lost it back in the more Skaven made tunnel that you just came out of. So you're not sure which direction to take. Um, you could go left, you could go right. You know if you go to the right, Marius, it is at an incline and that should lead you up towards the mine itself. Going to the left would lead you lower um, into the mountain. Let's go lower into the mountain. Okay. So making an educated guess, Marius begin, um, directs all of you going to the left, going deeper into the, into the earth. And some time passes. A good amount of time passes. Um, I'm going to need perception tests from all of you. Um, okay. Bragadine and... Nathaniel, don't have blinding conditions anymore because you are well out of the range of the uh, the sewage smell. Okay. Nice. Okay. Mary's rolled an 8 out of 57. Okay, very good. How about um, Bragadine? I'm doing the math. I rolled 18. So for sight would be, I still have a negative 10 on perception because my bl one eye, right? Yes, because you have one eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 63, 18 out of 63. So I think that's four levels of success. Okay. Is that with your hearing or is that your sight? Oh, with my hearing, that would be seven levels, six levels of success. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I rolled and... a... Yeah, I rolled a uh, It'd be like two levels with your, or two or three levels with your sight. Um, so, three and what, what did you, yeah, what did you get, with, uh, Seamus? Uh, 31 out of 56. Okay. All right. And are we still in kind of uh, a rough kind of marching order, uh, similar to what we were before? Maybe not as, not a single file, but in probably. kind of that kind of same vein? I, I yeah. assume that, yeah, Nathan yeah. Is, uh, Nathaniel's right next to Bragabee. Yeah. Okay. And you guys are, are moving forward. Um, Marius, I'll say this. Um, we'll, we'll start with, with uh, Bragadine for hearing. Bragadine, you hear um, scraping noises from further down the tunnel. Um, they're somewhat loud at first. And then you hear something behind you. Something more subtle, more concealed. Um, Marius and Seamus, you hear the noises coming from deeper. They sound. It sounds like. <sighs> It just sounds like movement. It sounds like something is happening. There, there's there's some creatures or something is much further down this tunnel making noise that's reverberating up the shaft. It's almost in, unintelligible. Um, Bragadine is the only one who hears something behind you, and it is not very far behind you. Gentlemen, uh... I know you can hear uh, that in front of us, but I, I kind of lean in real close to uh, Marius and Seamus. I think there is something right behind us. Right behind us. 
and I kind of clutch my sword and pull my shield up a little bit. Mm-hmm. What are you guys I doing? Don't, don't know if they got a message. Yeah, I mean, I heard it. I just didn't know if I thought you were doing something else. Um, if Marius hears that, he kind of would just kind of look at the other two party members with a, a, a concerned and angry face. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like fuck. Um, and then Marius is probably gonna. Is there anything in front of us that I can like? dart behind or like cover of any sort i will i will say it's a shaft so you know it's it's pretty much open um i will say this though marius with your previous secret signs test that you made you see markings on the side of one of the um, supports one of the wooden supports that notate that there should be a a um almost like a store a hidden like storage chamber not too far ahead um marys will kind of look at um the other two party members and just kind of be like oh, follow me that's and kind of head towards that storage chamber to like kind of like set an ambush or turn around or okay see if someone's following us yeah and Seamus? Uh, or in Marius's habitat, so Seamus is going to follow. Okay. All right. I, I whispered to Nathaniel, beware, there is something behind us. Huh? What? Shift your, shift your weapon for a rear attack. Yes. Yes. And he's, he's very warily glancing into the darkness behind you. As the the single torch is not illuminating even the uh, the distance of the walls too well, but Bragadine, you keep hearing the noise as you guys keep moving further down, and though you can't pin down exactly where it is, you can tell it's following. And after about about uh, ten fifteen minutes, Marius. You come upon the entrance to the kind of hidden, the hidden cache, the hidden storeroom that you know is been put down several of these shafts just in case someone was trapped on the other side. And it's also at this point, Marius, that you find your first body. Mm. It looks like it's been here a long time. Minor. It's a minor. Skeletal. There's still a pick clutched in its hand. A two-handed pick. Oh, Mary, so can I lean down to it? Does he have a minor helmet? He has the helmet on. The uh, candle appears to be intact. Um, looks like it burned down or, or maybe snuffed out um, whenever mm-hmm. the attack took place. But you can tell from looking at the corpse that it looks like his spine was severed around the uh, the neck area. Mm. I guess we'll kind of bend down towards him. Oh, may, may Sigmar guide you. And, um, grab his helmet mm-hmm. and slap it on his head. Kind of dust it off and slap it on his head. Oh, yes. And then... Uh, um, <laughs> Hope you don't mind if I borrow these, friend, and take the the pick as well, mm-hmm. and and just kind of let's go and continue on. And it's only with a few steps you get to the secret cache, and it looks like maybe this man was attempting to make it to the storeroom, and he just didn't. He just fell short. Um, Seamus and Bragadine, you don't know what the hell uh, Marius is stopping for. You can't you can't see the way the stonework is laid out. You don't see what the hell he's stopping for. But he moves over to the wall and he touches 
um, along the wall, and eventually you find what you're looking for, Marius. There's been layers of dust where this door has been um, just sediment. Um, it's just been sitting here for so long that if you didn't know it was here, you wouldn't be able to find it as you dust your hands across it, revealing a, a thin but um, easily concealed uh, door that blends in very evenly with the, the side of the wall, almost natural-like. Now, it's not as good as the hidden doors you guys saw in Carrick Zorn, by any means. Those were completely hidden from you until they were pointed out, just about. But it still looks like it would be very difficult for someone that didn't know it was there to be able to see it. Um, the door swings inward, and there is a room on the inside. Are we entering? Yeah. More okay. lights. You push inside, Marius. Um, do you have the candle lit at this point? Uh, I probably would have had Seamus light my candle. Okay. <laughs> of course, you, of course, Seamus, you lit that candle, didn't you? I know you did. Oh, I did. <laughs> um, you peek your head in there, Marius, and... Uh, you can see that this, in fact, um, it has what used to be shelves. It looks like most of them have rotten away over the years of just disuse. But it seems safe, safe enough. It's about like a 10 by 10 room. Um, Mary's, is, is there kind of like a, is it just, is it just like a square box? Or is yes. there like a way I can, can I get kind of like behind the door seal? Um, so, yes, you can. Like yeah, it, it it goes over the edges of uh of the of the entrance. It goes out to the sides, so yeah, you can okay. get b behind the door easily. Uh, Marys will kind of, you know, hurry people in and get behind the door, and then he's gonna just kind of try to wait to see if anyone tries to follow. Okay. And what do what do Bragadine and uh, Seamus do when they get inside this room? I'm gonna snuff my candle out too. Okay. So we're in darkness now? Um, well, Seamus should still have a torch. Okay. Hmm. And there's just one obvious entrance? There's no... We can't see any other uh, entrances besides the one that we came in? Nope. You don't see any other entrances. Um, there are there are things inside here as you step inside. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, Seamus, there's something that you might um, pique your interest as you as you enter inside this room, you do see that there, there are shelves. Most of them have collapsed. Um, but it looks like one of the shelves towards the back, Seamus, it looks like there was a crate. And the crate has a very familiar symbol on the side of it. Um, one Brankton would be very familiar with as well. It has a, uh, it looks like a gold tooth. Oh, oh, Seamus, mm. does that does that not belong to uh, Mr. Gold? Is that not part of uh, his equipment? It appears so. You would know best, though, Bragadine. <laughs> A dark look crosses Bragadine's face, but he says nothing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Why don't you go pop it uh, open and see what's in there? Well, Daniel, quick, help me uh, see if we can pry this open before... Uh, 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 of course, and he uh, begins moving with you. You pass by the remnants of several... Um, it looks like there's there's a bunch of like mining equipment and picks that are kind of laying about. There also mm -hmm. looks like there used to be a lot of food rations in here, but they look like they're not good anymore. Um, there is, however... Yeah, they they pretty much have wasted away. Um, they look molded and just they're they're not good. They wouldn't be good to eat. Um, there are, however, um, several bottles of it looks like some kind of liquid. And as you slosh it around, Marius, you would know that these are this is just water essentially. 
So there, there are several glass containers of water. Um, as you move towards the crate, Bragadine, mm -hmm. you can see that the top of the crate is already open. And you peek inside, and you see there's a bunch of, it looks like hay. Um, w what would be used as uh, like packing material, basically. Okay. Um, it's half full of hay. And whatever was on the top, you could see impressions in the hay, and it looks like it's been removed. Okay. I um, I mentioned that I, there was something in there, but that's, something that's been taken out already. And I continue to pull the hay out. Okay, but you reach down in. That, not haphazard, I'm going to kind of put it in a pile. I, we may need it. So. Okay. You begin pulling out clumps of hay and you find something very interesting Bragadine um, something that Seamus would be very uh, uh, interested to see himself as you pull away some of the hay and you reveal a false bottom of this crate and it's very obviously a false bottom because there's a latch okay Ooh. With that new look, we have, we have found a surprise. A Hi. secret in here. Yes. Yes. Uh, perhaps, it, uh, perhaps it will be something good. Can I do a check for traps? Sure. Just to give make sure there's no booby trap on it. Go ahead and give me an intuition check. Okay. 26 out of... That's a pass. I don't know how many levels of success yet. It's uh, two. Two levels okay. of success. All right. You you look at it. It looks simple. You don't see anything that you would make you think okay. that it would be trapped in any way. You reach down, unclasp it, and then pull it open. And immediately, you see what can only be described as a small armory of shot ammunition and pistols. Seamus, come here. You want to see this. In addition to that, there is also um, several bottles of Bretonian wine and several... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there are several bottles of what appears to be um, some kind of beer. Um, you're not sure exactly. You're not exactly a connoisseur of beer, Bregadine, but Seamus and Marius would be able to tell you that it is, um, while it's not fine Dawi ale, it is one of the finer beers brewed in the Empire by men. No Bugmans? No Bugmans. Mm. <laughs> Gold doesn't have um, access to Bugmans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. While they're looking um, at that stuff, can I, can, can I be like peeking out the kind of like oh, yes. peeking out the door and yes. into the darkness to see if I see anything? Definitely. Go ahead and give me a perception test. Yeah. Uh, not, not as great. That's going to be a 45 out of 57. So just a success. Okay. Um, you're, you're peeking out with just a success level. You don't see anything. You don't hear anything, but you do hear the commotion of Bragadine and his men at arms just being excited back there. Bragadine yelling about his, his newly found wine. Um, Seamus, are you approaching the crate? Uh, what I know what Marius is doing. I, don't know I mean, you he was you kind of see him trap. over there. Um, he's just kind of pressed himself up against the wall. But um, uh, so I imagine I'm smart enough to figure that out. I would probably step to. I wouldn't walk up to where Bragadine is, but kind of step off to the side of the room, out of the the doorway. Mm -hmm. Are they within sight? Would Bragadine be within sight of the doorway? Oh, yes, moves. definitely. Okay. I'll just kind of step off to the side. All right. 
Um, go ahead and you also give me a perception test, Seamus, but yours will be at minus 20. All right. Uh, 52 out of... Uh, I failed. Um, okay. All right. That's fine. So, Marius... You're watching all this happen. You hear Bragadine getting really excited. Um, Nathaniel's getting excited as well. And then you hear a t -t 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 of, of feet quickly approaching. Marius is kind of like, like kind of pulling back against the wall and mm -hmm. is like grabbing the pick that he has and kind of like tightening his grip. Okay. And as you do, Marius, very quickly, you're the only one prepared. Seamus was not aware enough. As a small, well, it's not naturally small, a hunched form clothed in black wrappings begins to dart through the door. Looks like he has um, several, a blade in each hand, um, downturned, looks like they're daggers, and he is darting towards the back of Bragadine and Nathaniel. Um, you, however, do get an opportunity to do something in this moment. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing. I'm going to swing at him. <laughs> Okay, are you making an attack, or are you, like, what exactly, are you trying to kill said person? Uh, well, that's all Marius does is kill. I know, Marius, it's true. That's true. That's Marius true. does kill. Well, maybe, maybe Marius, um, let's try this, let's try this. Marius is gonna, like, um, try to grapple this person. Okay. Thing. All right. He's gonna try to grapple. All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll with your unarmed. Okay. Uh, that's a 23 out of 70. Somehow that is enough, Marius. <laughs> <laughs> as you, as you, I mean, it's a split second. You reach out and you grab a hold of this thing's left arm. And as you do, you pull it close and you can feel it's not very strong and you feel fur beneath the cloth and the thing <laughs> as it fully turns on you as you grab a hold of it. And there's a writhing Skaven assassin in your in your arms currently. And I need everyone roll me initiative. All right. All right. Hell yeah, brother. Oh, boo. I got a 10. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong dice. Got a 12. All right. Marius? Marius got a 14. Okay. All right. All right. Um, let me make sure. Oh, yeah. Marius, you are first up. As this as this creature is, <laughs> well, I'm assuming I've kind of like dropped my pick at this point. Um, That's yeah, I would I would I would assume so. And um, I'm I'm grappling it. I'm I I don't I'm getting confused by the rules a lot in the grappling for this game. But I'm can I make an attack? Or am I just grab Yes, them? yes, you can, and it bypasses armor, but it has to be an unarmed attack. So, okay, yeah, yeah. Then I'll take an unarmed attack. That is a forty-two out of seventy. Whew. Um, let me make sure. I think you might actually get some bonuses to this because he's technically entangled. Your turn is just. No. Oh, okay. No. No. You don't get any bonuses. But he is—he's entangled okay. by you. Okay. So okay. yeah. 
Um, that definitely will. Yeah, that'll hit. He can't. He can't dodge in time. Um, what do okay. you do? Um, I mean, I'm just gonna crack him with a knuckle duster. Um, well, you still got to hold him like you like you still holding on to him with one hand and then hit him with yeah, the, just like yeah. I figured if I if I grabbed him by the arm, I'm just like grabbing him and just give him a quick punch. Okay. Um, How much well, damage actually, is no, that? Guess, if I'm if I'm grappling, maybe I just like put my other hand on his throat and just squeeze, you know? Yeah. I know it bypasses armor, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. So how yeah. much uh, how much damage is that? Oh, that is twelve. Twelve damage. Twelve damage. Whew. He ain't looking good as you squeeze quick, and he. <laughs> Mercy, man! <laughs> I think mercy. <laughs> he starts squealing from the attack. Um, with it being a grapple, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I'll let you make another attack. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Makes um, sense. Do you, do you want to do anything else, though, Marius? Um, Marius, probably <laughs> just like kind of cry out to everyone so they know that there's someone in here. I don't know if Brian even knows, but it's going to be like, you know, I've got a lively one here! And just like, you know, as I continue to squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. uh, Bragadine, it is, uh, it's your turn. As you, uh, as you, you, you spin around with all of this happening, and you can, you do see, um, in the flickering firelight of Seamus's torch, um, okay. that Marius has a hold of a rat man and he's squeezing around its throat and it's actually begging for mercy at this point. Nathaniel, gather up this uh, this straw and see if we can't bind it tight to make a a, a larger, more brighter torch or brand. And I will walk forward a little bit, uh, gra make, grabbing my sword and shield, and uh, go up closer to Marius. Okay. All right. Are you going to do anything to the assailant? Does it look like Marius has a good handle on him? It looks like he's got a pretty good hand on his throat. Uh... I don't think Bragadine has ever actually had any uh, encounter with a Skaven where he wasn't like under under the knife. It's so, true. Uh, yeah. Marius, what the, what the, what have you got here? Perhaps we uh, should I put it to the knife? As I pull, as I as I bring my sword in close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it squeals more as you <laughs> and you you smell this horrible stench as you do that, and it smells <laughs> like someone just shit themselves, but like ten times worse. It's, no, please, please, mercy, man, things, mercy, master. Nathaniel, be quick. We must. It smells terrible. I I want to put it to the torch right away. Yes. Are you, so, are you are you going to do anything, though, Bragadine? I would like to. Uh, I'm going to try to interrogate it. Actually, if if you'll permit me. Okay. To, I'm uh, I'm going to allow if I'm I'm going to allow this to be. That's going to be the end of your turn if you're not doing anything physically. There's one more, one more turn, and then we'll see how this goes. Yeah, there's nothing physical that Bragadine's going to do to okay. it right, right at this point since it's All in right. Marius's grasp. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seamus, would you like to do mm -hmm. anything? Uh, does it have any weapons in its hands? Um, currently? Let me see if it... Nope. It couldn't hold on to... It had two daggers, and they mm -hmm. are sprawled out somewhere in the room, just away from its hand, for away, f away from its grasp. At least uh, that's what uh, you can see. 
Is his arms like flailing around though, or is oh yeah, flailing around down trying down to clawing at Marius's hand? Um, and you would know, uh, all of you would know from a mechanical standpoint, that a grapple can only been be broken with an opposed strength check. Mm-hmm. So the chances of someone getting away from Marius Wolf are pretty thin. Just saying. Um, <laughs> just saying. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have any weapons in his hands, then I'll just go to the door and shut the door if I'm able to. Oh yes, easily you're able to to uh, grab a hold of the door because it, it it pushed inwards, and you s- push it closed. Um, and then uh, I'll just stand there, sentinel style with my crossbow. All right, and this brings us to the the penultimate moment, Marius. I need you to make me an opposed strength check. Oh, oh no! All right, uh, it's a ten out of seven. Oh yes, mm. um, you easily it it writhes around in your grasp, and feeling it can't get loose, it just goes limp. It just. <gasps> And we are officially out of combat. It is um, so, Marius. What would you like to do? Uh, quick DM question: Does yes. this look like uh, we've seen some Skaven? I guess you I mean, have. We're not experts, you know. <laughs> do, does it look different than other Skaven we've seen before? Um, I mean, you haven't like you you haven't like in, in, yeah you haven't had the opportunity to like in. inspect um their bodies because yeah. they always seem to disappear. But um, he, it appears that his fur is uh, like a, a really dark um, brownish color. Um, he has the beady red eyes that are actually kind of bulged out of his head right now. But he's currently completely limp. The black clothing, um, you, you could tell, was, definitely blends in. And now that he's still... Um, you notice that on his feet, he has what looks like uh, blades attached to each paw um, that look like they would be used for climbing and possibly for slitting a man's throat. Um, but he's currently not moving. Um, Marius will um, yell at Bragging, and how big is this box? Um, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a decent sized crate. You could stuff a grown man in it for sure. Ooh, that's that sounds good. Um, <laughs> Marius is gonna say, uh, um, "Dump out the box," um, and tell him to dump out the crate. And mm-hmm. once they finish doing that, um, he is going to throw this thing in the box. Um, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's what we will interrogate him. All right, <laughs> is in, from inside this box. Either that. Or it's gonna get dark. I don't. I. I, I don't feel like Marius is gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You all. You can easily make make the uh, make the roll. Um, he's not getting out of your grasp as you chuck him into it. As Bragadine, um, well, probably Nathaniel at this point. Bragadine's moved away. Nathaniel dumps the box over, and you kind of chuck him into the box, and the things, <laughs> and it stops pretending to be dead because it thought that maybe you'd leave it alone. It pretended to be dead for a second. Ah, nice, nice man. Things don't, nah, don't do nothing hasty. Crutch is, Crutch is a loyal, loyal servant to the masters. Um, I'm gonna close the box on its head. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you shut it. Um... Are you like crushing its head in the box, or are you like no, just no, closing no. it? Just like, no, no, just like making him go down. In the okay, box. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. you you close the box, and he's stuck inside at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, the guns, I, you know, yeah. And I, I, Marius is I'm going to assume like, everything's empty. I'm going to assume it, everything got yeah. dumped out, so it's just an empty box. Okay, okay cool. Then yeah, he's he's. Uh, yeah. Like keeping the box, I'm keeping the box closed. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you you hear you hear the fumbling from inside, and it tries to move the lid a couple times. N- nowhere near strong enough to move it. And if anything, it's weaker than a normal person should be, um, mm. as it's like pushing. It's very feeble. <sighs> ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh, you, uh, gray hair. You, uh, you, are uh, you, you. 
have loyal servant Kretsch. I, I, you, you, you spare me, spare me, oh great one, oh great fur. He's calling out. <laughs> you're assuming he's calling out towards you, Marius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what are you gonna do to us, Crutch? Hi, just come hi. Say hello. I'm s just coming, just coming to you know, just just do as doing as I'm told, Kafer. Okay, just come to come to look, see what what was what what was was going on in in here, and to to. To, to leave leave you be just slink away that's yes 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 that's it yes I feel like that was a lie crutch uh, no no lies master no <laughs> lies we might we might play a game Seamus um do you see those those guns over there I mean maybe you take a couple shots into this box and see <gasps> no! wait 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 Mary. <laughs> Nathaniel, do you have that straw bound up? We, uh, I think we have a use for fire now. It smells terrible in here, and I want to burn it out. Oh. No, 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 anything, anything, the little masters, I'll show you. I can, I can bring you to them. You've come for them, haven't you? Braggadine's actually going to get real kind of up close to the box. Now, this guy is, we haven't taken his weapons from him. He's still armed, right? I mean, Both the weapons are dropped on the floor. His feet, daggers were on the floor. He had you. Yeah, d you didn't. You didn't search him, so you're not sure what he's got on him. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. But he's inside a crate essentially right now. Yes. Right? Yes, he is. Yeah. Um. Braggadine's actually going to get right up close against it and 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 kind of give a wink to Marius and and uh, look, little. Uh, what did you say your name was, friend? Hi. Oh, Mo most loyal, most loyal, Cretch. Yes, yes. Kretsch? Very, Kretsch? Tr very no, no. trust, trustworthy. My, uh, my friend, he, uh, I don't know if you could tell from his strength, but he is of ogre blood, and you know how they have an appetite. Oh, yes, and yes. We, we, we uh, have not fed him, and he has not eaten in such a, such a long time. He must, uh, he must have food then. I, Cretch, uh, yeah, will find food, find, find, I... find, bring food. You l let Cretch out. Before we do any of that, you must tell us how you found us, what you were doing, why did you come into the room, and if you lie to us, I will let them eat with your hands. Do we understand? You choose. I will let you choose which hand, though. You will, you will choose which hand he eats, or you could not lie. Charmo? He's just. He's just, uh, he's just sobbing at this point. <laughs> oh, God. Crush. Whimpering a little bit. Where, where are the others? Where are the, the people you took? Oh, you look so hungry. You should be careful. You should answer correctly. <gasps> Hi. You, you, which... Uh, huh? Mary's is gonna like, he's gonna like hit the the box, ah, like full ah. force, but just kind of like slam it, and just be like, "Hardy crutch." It was, it was, it was, it was Napscrit. Napscrit told me to to follow you. Well, who's this Napscrit? Please, please enlighten us. He's, he, what, what, Lord Napscrit? He's. He's, he is the, the, the borough, borough leader of Clan Fleabiter. He, he tells, he tells the, the great Crete to tell Cratch to follow man things deep, deep inside. He said, great for very dangerous. Oh, you have no idea how dangerous he is. Fortunately, you have me as a friend. I, he says, he's, he says, little man, great in stature, most, most magnificent of them all. Yes. No, you wouldn't be trying to flatter me to try and, uh, no, no, me, would you? no, crutch, crutch is not good with words. 
I, I don't know if I, I believe him. Nathaniel, bring me that, uh, oh, yes, that cleaver there. The one over there on the wall. Please bring it to me. I think he wants to give me one of his fingers. I think he is lying. You are not lying to me, are you not? No, no, no. Because, no. Um, Here, stick your hand out. We will, we will lift the, the top of the box. So stick your hand out. You choose which hand. Are you going to lift the top of the box? Marius is not lifting the top of the box. Marius is going to... Um... A moment we... passes when the box isn't lifted. And it gets quiet in the box. Go ahead, Marius. <laughs> Gretch. Gretch. Are we heading in the right direction? Towards your burrow. <laughs> and you hear giggling. <laughs> Me thinks, me thinks you don't want to open box. Me thinks that you squeak say many things. Me thinks that maybe Cretch can offer you a deal. Yes, yes. You let Cretch live. Cretch takes you Marius, to Burrow. Marius is going to look at Seamus and kind of look down at the gun. Uh -huh. Seamus will let loose a crossbow bolt <laughs> into the into the Ooh. box into the wood into the box. It <laughs> crunches into the side. It's thick wood, so it doesn't completely go through, but it, the mm -hmm. the point definitely sticks through. And you're ah! Ah! oh, hi, hi. Marius, please lift lift the top of the box. I just want to cut one of its fingers off. It's just Daddy, something I, we do I, in the in the villages to uh, I, I, the peasants and lessons. I want yes, to make I, sure. Yes, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure. I don't you left that box, Bagadine, and he's going to slash your throat before you can even <laughs> blink. Exactly, Bagadine. It's, it's not safe. It's much, much simpler if uh, Seamus just decides to have some target practice. No, 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 not, not, not dead thing, not him. Um, Gretch, I'm not going to ask you again. Are we heading in the right direction? What? What? It much depends. Yes, yes. You you go towards Burrow. You go towards Man Thing Village. Go towards Burrow. That's what I asked, Cratch. Yeah. Yes, yes. Of course, of course. Yes, Clan Clan Feebiter down below. Hmm. And the uh, the captives are they still alive? What what is captive? You, you you mean slave things? Meat meat? Yes yes slave things meat meat. I I of course meat 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 still live. Great tackerich, which is to keep keep safe meat. Is it tackerich? Is that what he said? He, it's hard for me to to say in a damn Skaven voice. Tack Tritch. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tack Tritch. Okay. Tack Tritch, Tritch. Okay. yes. Okay. okay. Right. Sorry, writing it down. Uh... Alright, lads. I'll leave it up to you. I could care less. If we kill this thing or. Oh, no, no, no. Crutch can lead you. Crutch can show you the way. Crutch can, Crutch can get you around the, the trap things. Yes, yes. Get you around all, all of them. Show you where the meat meat is. Well, well, Marius and Seamus are, I'm air quoting, interrogating a crutch here. Um, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Raggedy is going to be looking for anything, um, chains, uh, wire, rope, anything uh, in this little room that we might be able to use to try and buy. There, this, this. So there is, um, there, there was like basic mining equipment in here. Uh -huh. There is a spool of rope, um, standard spool of rope on uh that's kind of laying on the floor the hook that it was on wore away at some point you don't know what state the rope is you're not an expert in these things okay but you do find some okay 
I um, I lift it up to show it to, uh, without saying anything, just to show it to uh, Seamus and Marius. Kind of shrug my shoulders. Try to mm-hmm. emphasize over they, 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 shall we, they, they get my, my unspoken message of do we want to use this rope? Uh, Marius will kind of nod. Um, all right, Gretch. You say you can lead us around some ambushes, is it? Oh, yes, yes, many, many, many lookouts. Yes, yes, many, many trap things. You know, man things not see them. Man things stupid, stupid. I, but, but not you, man things. You, man things, much, much smart, smart, much, much wise. You, you, you allow Kretsch show you way. You let Kretsch live. Yes, yes. Mm. Is that what everyone wants? And I'm gonna look around and take a tally of votes, I guess, of the, of the party. Um, Nathaniel is an abject whore. He is like, <laughs> he is like slack jawed. He just saw something from a fairy tale. Um, literally, um, he is not not coping well. <laughs> so the rest of you probably get votes at this point. <clears throat> Thordun will never let us back in his bar, Marius. If he finds out, you let us scave and live. They are. Valid point, they are Seamus. Of, valid point. They are. They are beasts of trickery and deception. Uh, I, I, I fear that if the moment our back is turned, he will try to put the knife in it. Perhaps mm. you would let me take one of his hands before we do this? What's with you in the hands, Bagley? Um, uh, and uh, it's a lesson we, we use back in Breton. I forget. I'm I'm no longer in Breton. <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, Seamus, uh, get by the door. Make sure he doesn't get out of here. And mm-hmm. uh, um, ready, Nathaniel. You ready? Nathaniel is um, still slack jawed, just like. <laughs> Just yeah. staring. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, I, Mar- I am ready. <clears throat> Marius is gonna get like he's mm-hmm. kind of standing on his on his feet. And he's has his hands on top of the box lid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, um, he is going to try to open up a, a, the box, and, and as quick as he opens, he's gonna try to grab Cratch. Okay. Um, as Before soon he as does you... that, is it what? crutch or cratch? Cratch. The crutch. Cratch. I'm, I'm that, saying crutch. Okay, crutch. Braggadine, uh, Nathaniel, uh, grab your your halberd and uh, get ready to uh, impale this creature. If upon my command, but no long, but but only upon that. Um, Braggadine, Nathaniel has his halberd clutched in his hand. He looks at you and then looks back to the box. And his hands are shaking. Oh, and no, no, no. I can't wait. No, you've already said it. I can't wait for him to make an <laughs> attack and stab you in the back. It's going to be great. Or, so let's or, let's or, continue or, or. forward. Um, so you go ahead and you open the box at this point, Marius? Yeah. Okay. You open the lid, um, Marius, and I guess uh, Seamus. Are you next to the box, or is it Bragadine? Yeah, no, I've had yeah, I've had my back posted against this door okay. I shut. So Marius Bragadine and yeah. Bragadine, I need you both to give me dodge rolls. Okay. Oh shit, I'm gonna re-roll. <laughs> I'm re-roll. Yeah, I've gotta use my last yeah, fortune point. Uh twelve out of fifty. Okay. And bracketing? We did not dodge. To okay. one level of failure. Okay. Bragadine. A knife slices 
through your kind of uh, near your throat. Luckily, it doesn't hit the jugular. Um, it only deals nine wounds. Okay. Does my uh, armor take any of that away? It uh, bypasses your armor. Okay. Because it was a. Uh, do, are you wearing chainmail or are you wearing? Yes. Chainmail. Okay. No, it doesn't bypass chainmail. So you can use your chainmail and your toughness for this. Okay. Yeah. So it digs in, not not too deep, but you get a little nick on the side of your throat as you ah. You flinch back. Um, Marius, you do manage to duck out of the way as the dagger flies overhead and clinks off the wall. Um, Kretsch comes leaping out of the box. And as soon as he's in midair, he Uh. has a third dagger clutched in his tail. And he throws Mm -hmm. it, um, trying to... Let's see here. As soon as he leaps, can I use my fast shots? You can. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will allow it. Go ahead and give me a my shot. Fast shot talent. All right. Uh, I'm also going to use dead eye shot if it if it hits him. My new talent. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, that's a thirteen out of fifty six. Yes. Um. You get to, and I'm glad you did that because I was about to put one between your eyes with a critical success. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where do you want to shoot him? Um, I will shoot him. Is he like when he jumps out? He's like full, like spread eagle. Yeah, style? he's like he's like completely in the air, and he's got a he's got a third dagger, with his tails wrapped around that he was going to throw at you with his with his tail. Uh, then we'll do we'll do a throat shot, neck yeah, shot. He, he's mid air, and you <laughs> with the crossbow, and before he can let loose. With his weapon, it pierces through the skin of his neck and hits the what the equivalent of the carotid artery in his throat mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and tears it wide open. And this black blood just like arterial sprays across the wall as he ah! and he falls to the ground. And I'm talking about within seconds. Within mm-hmm. seconds, he is dead. Mm. Reload another bolt, just because. Oh, thank you, Seamus. You're covered in black the box. Uh, Mace is going to walk over there and put a boot on his head. Smoosh it. Damn it. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> but... <laughs> As you do that, Nathaniel uh, lunges forward and stabs Bragadine in the back with his halberd. No, he doesn't do that. <laughs> say, how, he doesn't do that. <laughs> he's in. She's in shock this whole time. He's just standing there holding his halberd. Uh, so how many pistols were there? I think I, I missed that part. I didn't tell you. I said an armor. Tight. There are Tight. eight pistols in this box. Holy Shit. Smokes. Fuck. I can tell um, you, you so cannot carry pistols. eight pistols on your person. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> well, again, I, I would like to, uh, since I'm now of the Empire, I would like to try my hand with a few of those. Would you Would you hand me two of those, please? Mm, I thought this was a coward's weapon, Bragadine. You can grab it yourself. And I'll pick two for myself, and then I'll uh, pick up a third one and hand it to Nathaniel. And I'll put two, grab two, and kind of put them in my belt. Yeah, is uh, they're not loaded. Um, mm-hmm. Nathaniel's actually not that. good with black powder. Just so you know. Oh, okay, then never mind. I'll just, I'll leave that third one. I'll just take two. I mean, anybody can use a gun. It's just he's not proficient with it. So just so you know, he's good uh, with a crossbow. I'll, mm. I'll give him a crossbow. Okay, he he very shakily. Takes your crossbow from you. I'm assuming you hand him the bolts as well. Mm-hmm. And um, so you, uh, how many pistols are you going to take, Seamus? Uh, just two, since I don't have my my, my thing that let you me don't have your four. bracer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So just two. And then I guess uh, I guess Bragadine he... thinks he's going to load himself down. Hmm? He's going to grab two. He has no idea if they're loaded or not. So. <laughs> 
they're not loaded currently. Yeah, I, yeah he yeah he does, does not does not know. So hopefully, hopefully Seamus will enlighten him or not. Yeah, Seamus will load load pistols and mm. probably even get the hints. Yes. See if Braggadine oh, oh. if, if Braggadin can copy how I reload it. Oh, would you uh Seamus, would you would you please uh prepare these for me? I, I as a friend I, I ask you so that perhaps I may be able to use them. This is this is a coward's weapon, Braggadine. I remember you said that multiple times to me. <laughs> well, I'd we like are also loading. under the ground, and and in and it smells like a privy in here. And I, I will change. I, I, I can bend the rules a little bit. Besides, I've seen the devastation you wrought. With them. I've seen you smote our enemies down with, with with a single blast from one of these. I will give him my two. Let's take these just so I know they won't fucking kill us down here when they explode. <laughs> yes. So, now, what, what are we doing in this moment then? Since we're all geared up now. Um, yeah. Is there what's, anything what's else the in the room? What's the rest situation look like? You need to take a rest. You guys can take one if you'd like. Um, it just it takes an hour if you want to. You can. I don't know how long a, like we've been. Traveling. Oh well, currently you would not have done any resting because you were just interrogating a Skaven. Um, mm -hmm. But if you guys want to take the time, you can do so. Um, currently in this room, there's just it's just kind of mining equipment and things like that. Now there is stuff for climbing. Um, there was that rope, that fifty foot section of rope. Mm. There are um, small like. Um, uh, what would you call like that? Pitons or something like that. Uh, there's like small picks that you could use to climb with, essentially. Um, there is various other. Uh, well, the leather would be rotten, so that would probably be all the stuff that would survive. So that's about all you have right now, um, as far as other useful things besides what was in the crate. So you also have that wine. And there's oh, also yeah. a few bottles of water as well, and glass bottles, so that it would last. Okay. Um, Bragadine would like to... Uh, gentlemen, would you... Uh, Nathaniel, perhaps I, I want to find this, this cut and uh, see if I can mend it real quick before, before we... And then I feel that we will be in severe dire danger later, and I want to be in the best of health when we get there. Mm -hmm. So, um, I either want to take a rest or get a healing check from one of my bros. Okay. So, are we in agreement we're taking a short rest? A uh, short rest is fine, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or a rest. All right. uh, Mary's mm -hmm. just kind of looking over the, the Skaven's body. You know. Okay. Go ahead and give me a... This, uh, this will be an intuition check. Yeah. Uh, 42 out of 47. Okay. You're looking over it. You can see that the blades that were on its feet uh, were removed. And it looks like he, you were, that's what he threw at you. Um, that's easy enough to spot. You're not very familiar with Skaven anatomy or clothing. And as you kind of pat the creature down, um, it's hard for you to f tell if it has anything hidden on it. You do find a pouch on its hip. Um, you take the pouch and you hear the jingle of, it sounds like maybe coins. Do you open it up? Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Okay. You open it up. I need you to give me an endurance test. <laughs> oh, <Shit. no. laughs> Pocket sand. <laughs> Pocket sand. Uh, that is going to be uh, 22 out of... Uh, okay. Ooh, Critical success. Um, this is why you had to make the save, Marius. You open it up, and you see... They look like coins inside of this pouch. It looks like there's quite a few. 
there's just something a little wrong with them. First off, they have holes in the center of them. It reminds you of the coins that you saw in Napone, the ones that were made from lead. Except for these ones are apparently made of some kind of green glowing stone. Oh, yeah! And uh, you feel the telltale radiating energy of warp stone as these are warp tokens in your possession. Mm. And just... And just having, just being in their presence is, may have a corrupting influence on your body. Uh, Marius will, you know, kind of tighten the pouch again. Yeah. You tighten it down, and there's no effect. Whatever this pouch is made out of, which now that you're feeling it, it's made out of some kind of leather, which more than likely means it's made out of somebody's skin um, that's it currently is. containing it. Ugh. And he'll just kind of toss it on the ground and... Mm-hmm. Uh, take the body of the rat and just put it on top of it. Mm-hmm. And the body and the rat smells horrible. It smells really bad as you kind of put yep. it down. Um, you do notice, Marius, as you as you slam it down, that a uh, a dagger does fall out of its um, kind of its kind of like belt sash area. Um, it's a simple dagger. It doesn't. And it's actually very roughly made, even. But, um, does it look like a scaven made or is it human made? It looks human made, but it looks like it was probably scavenged. Marius will take the dagger and put it in his belt. Okay, you take the dagger. All right. Um, an hour passes. You guys can all regain your toughness, bonus, and wounds. Sweet. And what are we doing now? Um, Seamus will be talking to Marius and like all the stuff that's uh, in interrogation. Mm -hmm. so, Marius, he, he referred to me as a dead thing. He obviously knows about Mr. Gold. I assume that's the little man. Why do the Skaven know so much about us? You know, we've, we've seen them. For, for years, I mean, we chased, chased one all those years ago when we first came into the city to catch, and uh, you know, we've we've seen them, thousands of them in the mountains. It's yeah, they live among us. You know, the the rat catchers guild has failed us entirely. Um, Mary said, "Just kind of sitting there, like they've they've been underneath this entire time, <laughs> keeping an eye on us. That one tracked me last night and hit me in the leg. They've they've clearly been watching our entire city. I don't know what for, but we did see them make that deal with those cultists." We first left out of the gate, coming back from the pawn. I don't know. They, they just seem to be everywhere. I don't like what we're walking into, Marius. It does seem like they, they know we're coming. Well, I guess it's time to leave. All right. Um, Marius, you unlatch the door and pull it to... What's the marching order out of this room? Um, probably Marius first. Okay. And then mm -hmm. whoever by me, I guess. Braggadine will follow behind. But before we leave, mm -hmm. Braggadine would like to do an audio perception check. Marius, wait. Let me... Uh... I just want to see if I can hear anything. Okay. They're, they're, Go ahead and quiet, but... that, that's fine. Go ahead and give me a give me a check. See if you can listen in as he's opening the door. Uh, I got a fifty out of. Uh... I got a fifty out of ninety three. Four levels of success. Okay. 
All right, you as the door um, creaks open, you're you're listening as intently as you can, Bragadine, and you still you hear the noises coming from further down that you did before. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Okay. I, uh... As the as, as the doors pulled to, um, the four of you funnel out into the to the main uh the main tunnel system and you begin heading downwards there are several off junctions to go to other places it looks like they're all skaven made tunnels I'm going to need a tracking check, Seamus. And I'll give you a uh, I'll give you a plus twenty on this because of uh, Marius and Seamus helping you. Um, forty eight I mean, out Marius of bragging. <laughs> uh, forty eight out of seventy six. Okay, all right. So between the th- the three of you. Um, Seamus is able to kind of pin down an area. There's lots of traffic in, in throughout these tunnels, it looks like. And with your checks earlier, Bragadine, you hear um, rats coming and going in some of the offshoot tunnels. And then drift away. Most of them, it, it sounds like they've been, they're gathering down below. Most of them. There's groups that are heading upwards, though, that you can hear moving larger groups of probably 20, 30 um, moving in other tunnels uh, just because your hearing is so acute. You can hear the chittering, their, their chittering language to each other and um, things like that. But you continue down this tunnel for quite some time until um, Seamus picks up a trail of what looks like human footprints. Like people were walking. You finally pick up another trail of it. And you take a further um, Skaven tunnel um, about an hour down into this mountain. So you are deep and deep in the earth at this point. For the sake of brevity, you make a few twists and turns. And then you come upon what looks like the it looks like there is like very run down looking scaffolding up ahead um the wood looks in terrible condition you're not exactly sure how the hell it's even it's even stained together it looks like some of the planks aren't even nailed they're just kind of sat in place um and it opens up to a very large room that has like a honeycombs of tunnels leading to it as you're glancing out. Um, you're still in the darkness. You're somewhat concealed, or at least you think you're concealed. or are not exactly sure if these things can see in the dark or not. Um, I do need to ask the lighting situation as you begin to approach the, um, and this is definitely where most of the noise is coming from. Do we see lighting up ahead? Like, is it lit? You would you would see... You would definitely see a glow. And yes, you would actually see illumination, but it would not be the normal color that you would expect. It is more of a greenish color. Uh, Mary probably won't have his candle lit. Okay. Uh, if there's light up ahead. Yeah, okay, you snuff out the candle. Um, Seamus, yeah. torch? Yeah, I'd probably snuff it out if I can get okay. to a point where I can see. Yeah, you douse the torch as you guys begin to approach. I need stealth checks from everybody. Oh. Um, ooh, we're, we're underground. <laughs> you are underground. Uh. Oh, shit. Uh, Got a 28 out of, out of 42. Okay. Nice. Uh, Maris rolled a 2 um, out of 41 for my stealth underground. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, Braggity? Rolled an 8 out of 31. I don't know what's happening right now because I rolled a 9 for... Um, <laughs> <laughs> for Nathaniel. Oh no, perception. Oh, for, uh, oh, for Nathaniel. He makes his, uh, he makes Nathaniel so manages to keep his composure with you guys. Um, all of you surprisingly stealthy. Um, as you begin to slink forward, and bragging would be informing you that there is a large number of creatures ahead. You're not exactly sure how many, but there's a mm-hmm. large number ahead. And you begin to slink forward. And um, you get to the lip of where the scaffolding is starting to take place. And you now you notice that this tunnel lets off... It looks to be about 50, 60 feet above the bottom of the, whatever this chamber is ahead. And it looks like this chamber up ahead is the nexus of this Skaven Warren. This is where the actual Undercity is, uh, has been constructed. And as you glance over, you see, you see at least 100, maybe 200 um, rat men going to and fro, um, chittering and moving and doing things. You further see that there is... There is essentially a a large mound in the center of this room. Um, it looks like a dome has been built. And there is a rat man who has, and you can see him from, from it's a, this is about 100 feet away. The three of you can tell that this rat man is unique because, first off, he has tattered gray robes and his fur is white. And very unusually, he has horns on his head, curling horns, like a ram. There appears to be like jewelry and things dangling from the horns. And he has like some kind of gnarled looking black staff in one hand. And he's screaming at other, at other Skaven as they're walking by. And most of them are just ducking their heads and exposing their throats in a kind of weird motion at the same time. And then slinking away as he's screaming back and forth. And he keeps going in and out of the dome. And you can see most of the glow that's illuminating this area is coming from inside that dome. Um, though you can't see what's inside, it is concealed behind the, the wood and the stretched tan hides that are concealing it, but there's something in there, but what probably catches most of your eyes is directly below you, 50 feet below you at the bottom of the scaffolding, you see a pen, a cage. And it looks like it's full of people. You also see several guards standing around the cage. These guards, unlike most of the rat men that you've seen up to this point, they don't look like they're slinking around. These ones are wearing very, it looks like heavy plate armor. Uh, It's been tinged red. And they each have very vicious looking halberds in their hands. Or glaives. Either or. And these uh, storm vermin are guarding these cages. Damn it, bro. Furthermore, um, you, you hear a thumping noise. And the gray seer across the way pokes his head out and <laughs> and begins um sniffing and um uh stands up to his the fullest height he can get as you see a creature lumber out of a nearby tunnel a much larger tunnel 
It is 15 feet tall. Um, mounds of muscle. It's walking on hands and feet, but it looks like it could attempt to walk on just its uh, its hind legs if it needed to. It looks like a cross between a rat and a gargantuan-sized ogre. It's heavily furred, and riding on top of it is a rat man with very thick armor covering most of his most of his body his fur is black you can tell that he's old a little bit older than the rest of them because there's a tinge of gray like little white whiskers along his face and he's missing his tail it looks like it's been gnawed off at the end at some point he has something tucked in his belt, and he has this very vicious-looking sword on his hip. And this must be Wardlord Napscrit of Clan Fleabiter. As he's bellowing out directions, and everyone is immediately doing what he says. And... Though you guys aren't close enough to see, it looks like he is imparting his displeasure to the Grey Seer who is currently cowering down and begging for forgiveness. Um, there's a lot going on in this moment, but at <laughs> some point... Yes, there is. I know, there's a shitload going on. Um, yeah, thanks, viewers. Thanks. After a few moments, you you hear some, some squealing. And... You see uh, Napscrit on his on his rat ogre mount um, turn around and um, points a, points his jagged sword towards it, and it looks like it's dripping with with some kind of fluid off of it. And there's foul runes etched into its blade, and most of the Skaven that look like warriors begin to funnel in that direction out towards this tunnel leaving most of the warren empty there's still quite a few skaven that you can see and more than likely there's many more you can't what are we doing does there look like there's a path down to the cage below us if you can manage the scaffolding which, as you look down, first off, Marius, from an engineering perspective, you're not sure how the hell this shit is held together. Like, it looks like it's creaking and moving, even, even you guys just breathing on it. You get the, the, the sense that most of the stuff in here has been put together very quickly and could fall apart at any moment. Um... And you would know from looking over at the body earlier that the Skaven weigh significantly less than all of you. And more than likely, um, all of their building construction is, uh, is built with the idea of a smaller, more agile form um, crossing across it. So for you to get down the 50 feet safely, it would require probably some rolls. Or you can be creative and we'll figure something out. But yes, there is a path, technically. More than likely, there will be a few jumps that you will need to make. And who knows if you can do that quietly or not. There are storm vermin at the bottom guarding this cage. You see oh, four sorry. storm vermin guard, guarding this large cage. Mm -hmm. And this is the only the cage case. you can see for now. There might be more stuff in here. Did the Gracie leave with the contingent of... No, he did not. He is by the, the large dome-like tent in the center, and you see him mm -hmm. duck back inside. Um, I forgot to mention, there are also two storm vermin um, guarding the entrance to that tent, except these ones have white fur. They look albino. It's kind of strange. Mm hmm. Do we notice any kind of lookouts? Are there is there security like Go ahead and give me some perception tests. Yeah. <clears throat> Bragging's gonna help to uh, help him or should I just roll for myself? 
Um, I'll let you guys make that choice. Marius rolled a four out of fifty-seven. <laughs> okay, that's well, pretty well. good. We'll leave it. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, so, how many levels of success is that, um, Marius? Oh, that's that's five. Five. All right. Yeah. Um, Seamus, are you rolling your own, or are you helping Marius? No, I'll just you know help Marius, I guess. Okay. All right, so we'll add on two to that, so we'll say seven. All right. Um, oh. <laughs> Marius, you're glancing out. Um, with seven levels of success, you do see, Marius, that on the other side of the dome, and this is some probably two, three hundred feet on the other side of this, of this uh, room, which actually, honestly, it's probably farther than that because this is a full warren with lots of twists and turns and ramshackle buildings and, and kind of holes. But you do see on the other side that there are cages on the other side. These ones are a lot bigger. And it looks like they have somewhat smaller versions of that rat ogre thing the warlord was riding. Um, they're only a mere 10 feet tall instead of the 12 to 15 that that one was. Um, but still large creatures in and of themselves. And they look like they are currently just kind of lazily just looking around stupidly, um, gnawing on stuff. You also see in a, just because you have so many success levels, you see next to the big, the big dome-like structure um, that the gray seer ducked into. You see right next to it a smaller building that has what looks like a um, a cage like uh, door on it, made it like a barred door. And you see a human hand kind of resting on the outside um, through through the door. Um, as if there's probably at least a person inside there as well. Okay. Okay. But you do not see any immediate lookouts until you glance somewhat upwards and you see in some of the tunnels, you see it looks like um, strange things sticking out of one of these tunnels. It's to your left. It's about 50 feet to your left, and it's slightly above where your tunnel lets out. There's some more scaffolding that goes up to it. But you look at it, and you're like, man, it looks strange. Then you notice it's like a... It looks like the barrel of a rifle. Except for it's, like, comically large. Um, it's like three times the size of Seamus' Thunderer in length um, sticking out of this tunnel. And you count... Let me make sure I've got this correct. Oh, no. You count oh. three of these Warplock Jezile teams up in yeah. this... up there, But you see them. You do see them. The to your yeah. left... And you could take scaffolding to get up there if you so choose. But they are, it looks like they're kind of looking down on the, the Warren itself. Are they all in the same tunnel? Or they on the yes, tunnels? they're all in the same tunnel. Okay. I'll kind of point, I'll kind of quietly point towards the, mm -hmm. the Jez Isles so the others see the guns. Um, Is... Do I, is, do I see anything else? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Bragging. Is the scaffolding all one structure? Is it all connected? Or it's it all, all, it's it's a little bit of both. Um, it looks like it's just been built in places here and there. Uh, and some parts connect, some parts don't. It's, 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 just, it's all over the place, essentially. Does it look like it's made from wood and... And, and lashed together or nailed it together? It looks like it's made from everything, including, like, parts of Skaven. Bones. And, right. yeah, tissue, nails, anything they could scavenge. Of course. Of course it is. 
Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think we could need to take out those those lookouts first, my friends. It's going to be treacherous on these scaffoldings. They don't look very well built. Um, What are we doing, boys? Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's in shock. I know there's so much stuff. Oh God. Uh... What are we? What are we tackling first? I will say, the more time we spend just sitting here, the more time that gives me a chance to, you know, have somebody roll up on you. That's true. All right. Um, uh, Mace, May- I, uh, I Mace is that, gonna. Uh, I, I, you, you may be too heavy to. Uh, it was a big gulp as he says this. You may be too heavy to uh, be on some of the scaffolding. Perhaps I should, uh, if perhaps I should go on some of the the higher level ones to. Uh, uh, what am I saying? I, uh, uh, I, I'm very frightened right now. But uh, Marius, you are so big. You, you, you may, you may bring it down. If we need to uh, climb to anything, I, I may have to do it myself. To try and take out these uh, wretched vermin. Um, if you think you can take three or four, <laughs> you know, be, or may your God protect you. I I don't think that actually. Uh, perhaps if I was like Seamus and a master with these 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 fire weapons, but. Uh, Seamus, do you think you could uh, shoot them out from a distance? Uh, I'd alert this whole one. That's not a good idea. Seamus is going to start making a move, though, towards these snipers. Okay. DM question. Yes. How al- alcoholic is Bretonian wine? Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's a good vintage. It's, it's pretty strong. Compared to most, flammable alcoholic. Ah, uh, no. We're not talking hard it, liquor, so I, I want to make no, sure. No, yeah, no. Here. Wine's okay. not, yeah, un- unfortunately, me? not yep. as much yep. as you you'd hope. Yep. All right. Okay. Um. So whatever, whatever route um, to get to those guys, if that's the only route that I see. That's the one you currently see. Um, so I'm assuming Seamus is making a move. So you're you're going to yes. start. Um, do you have any points in climb? I have one point in climb. You don't have to make you know a what? check to do this you know currently. Yeah. You might have to in a minute. He's but gonna follow him. Yeah. Are you are you going as well, Braggity? Yes. yes. Do you have any points in climb? I have two. Okay. All right. And Marius, are you following? Uh, yeah, Marius is confident in his climbing ability. Okay, all right. Um, the three of you begin to climb. Um, does anybody give Nathaniel direction? Um, um, I'm sure he's uh, shaking and absolutely oh, he terrified. Is. Oh, he's completely <laughs> terrified. <sighs> There's like strange witch glow coming, illuminating this whole this whole under Warren. There's is an there under any, city. Is there any place I could tell him to hide? Um, you you kind of mention something, and he just kind of just sits down where the tunnel gets out to the scaffolding. Nope, nope, he just sits nope, there. Nope. Nathaniel, go go back to the room where we found the wine. That was Brigadine. That was an hour away. You know what? If you if you just stay here, you will they will find you, and that means they will find us. I'm I'm concerned that unless you want to try and follow us upon these skywalks, um, Shane is probably like halfway out on the things by now. Yeah, he's already kind of starting to scale them. Um, Bragadine, follow me or go back there. You can I see there's a go. look in his eye that like he's a, he's on the verge of cracking with you suggesting him leave by himself. 
Um, Follow me. Okay. Nathaniel, you can do this. I, you, you have told me. We have, we have traveled from our, from our home. We have been to all through the empire with the, with the Romani. I, this is nothing. These are just filthy, filthy rats. Like you Go saw on. in the gutters of your home village. You can do Go. this. Go ahead and give me a charm, charm roll, and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh, I rolled a two. Okay. That's seven levels of success. All right. He he kind of gulps deeply. I can, I, I can do this. I can do this. You can. You can. And he begins um, climbing um, behind you. Um, I need everyone now. How how are we trying to move stealthily, or are we just getting up as quick as we can? I assume um, Seamus is leading the way, though. Hmm? So Seamus, how are you? Yeah, how are I you mean, doing this? I'm not an expert on you know architecture and design, so I'd probably be going slow. Okay, all right. You can give me a. Um, this, this is where it gets weird. Mm -hmm. You're going to give me one roll, and it's going to be for both climb and stealth. Okay. So I need to know your results for both. So just roll once, and then let me know what your results are. Okay. Hmm. Good thing I saved those fortune points. Oh, man. Good thing uh, I good. All right. So I rolled a 42, mm -hmm. which... if. My the, my stealth agility is forty two and my climb is a forty one. Okay, all right, marginal, but yes, okay, got it, got it. Um, Bragadine. I rolled a nine. And my okay, so you're you're good for both, is yeah. Fifty two and my stealth is thirty one. Okay, and Marius. Uh, Marius rolled a twenty nine, um, which is um, good for both for climb. Climb, it's at 80. Mm -hmm. And for stealth, under if it's counts as stealth underground, 41. Yes. And, okay. I will say with everybody doing as well as they did that y your marginal failure isn't going to matter, Seamus, for the climb. Mm. Um, everybody did really good. Um, ironically, for some reason, I, I roll awesome for Nathaniel. Roll a four. Yeah. So Bragadine's speech yeah. apparently really, really pepped him up, and he's 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 keeping up behind you guys. And it takes. I mean, it's slow, Seamus, because several times mm -hmm. you go to grab something and it just pulls free in your hand, and you have to like place it somewhere else on the scaffolding to help you maneuver your way up. There's several planks you guys have to walk over, and it's almost like a tightrope, walking across, mm -hmm. climbing, very cliffhanger style, several times. Yes. And <laughs> after about 20 minutes, you and this is only like maybe a 20 foot climb at a, at a weird angle. You finally make it to the lip of where the Jezile teams are. There's three of them. With those stealth checks, you're able to get up to the lip, but they are facing outwards, which is where you guys are climbing from. So, I'm going to give them a perception test at this point. Everybody better cross their fingers. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um... I'm going to assume we're going in the order that we decided to walk out. So that would be Seamus, mm -hmm. then Marius, because Bragadine had to stay behind and talk and talk down uh, Nathaniel. So it'll be mm -hmm. Seamus, Marius, Bragadine, then Nathaniel. Okay. Okay. So that's the current initiative right now. So Seamus, um, you don't hear any movement. You do hear chittering and laughing. <laughs> Stupid man things. <laughs> and just like you hear several Skaven talking to each other. Now you can't tell how many there are. But it sounds like there's way more than just three up here. What do you do, Seamus? Are you just going to pop up? What are you going to do? 
Uh, instinctually, yes, Seamus is going to pop up. Okay. All right. We've already come um, this far. All right. You get to the lip and you throw yourself up kind of uh, just just like superhero style. You hop up and you're on the edge here. And you take you see six rat men. Um, they're within a few feet of you. Turn around in shock. They were. It looks like they were all playing some game together, and they. <gasps> and you have an opportunity to do something right now before all hell breaks loose. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep it silent and use the sword and uh, just cut down like the closest one to me. Okay, make me an attack roll. Alright, that is a... Ooh, that's a 31 out of... 65. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits. How much damage is that? Lord. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 wounds um and i will say these rats looks like they had they have um thin looking the equivalent of leather armor across their bodies um but you slice through the first one and <laughs> flinches away from you as you do so um did you ever get the manacles off your wrist seamus no so i don't i don't get any of those magical properties okay so you don't you don't Still. get any benefits from it until you get those off. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But you you do cleave into him, and it and it it uh, it cries out loudly as you slice into its flesh. Um, <clears throat> I'm essentially giving you guys a surprise round. So that is mm -hmm. your action as you move in and slice into the the nearest one. Um, Marius, you're next up. All right. Um, Marius uh, probably going to use his fists, I think. Uh, okay. On this, so he's going to going to try to punch one of them. Okay. You you clamber around Seamus real quick as you see him slice through uh, the closest rat. Mm. It's not dead, but it's it's close. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll punch his, I guess. His, the okay. One that isn't isn't dead? I rolled a thirty out of seventy. Oh yeah, easily. You easily just as, as you're running by, just a, a nice haymaker right to the side of the head stifles mm -hmm. its scream. Um, you still have Not another that. attack. There are Not five the in knife, range. The knife edge chops. No knife edge chop. It's a punch, <laughs> <you> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this one's a 10, not a uh, 80. Or 70, I guess. 70. God damn it. Not enough. Close, though. As the <laughs> one further back on the same on the same side. Um, how much damage is that, Marius? Uh, well, depending on if it's going to kill it or not, I might do dirty fighting. But it's going to be... Uh, Let me know. Uh, uh, 17 damage. Yes, you kill him in one hit. Jesus as it, as it, in shock, it opens its mouth <laughs> like it's gonna scream out, and you just like hammer blow on top of its head, <laughs> and like yeah. its head kind of caves into its chest, like the neck goes away, and you're like, ah! and then it just kind of sinks down, oh, no. uh, dead. <laughs> so, and I'm that's gonna be your turn, Marius, as you do so. Um, Bragadine, you, you're next up, as this is a happening real quick. We're springing up there and attacking the, uh, the, 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 the closest one. All right, there's four left. We'll probably the next, uh, one that looks un uninjured. Okay. Ooh, whew, 29 out of 57. So... Oh yeah, one. That, uh, yeah, it hits. It hits. How much damage is okay. that? It's gonna be five. Uh, ten. Ten wounds. Ten wounds. Okay. 
you slice into this one's arm is it and it flinches it flinches back um still up kind of clutches at the 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 black blood spilling out of its its left uh its left arm um as it uh stumbles away from you um Mm -hmm. daniel pops up and stares at the four rat creatures in close proximity And just drops to his knees, and his halberd falls from his hands as he just, <laughs> and he's just standing there. Um, he is succumbing to uh, some kind of creeping madness, apparently. Um, <laughs> Damn it! That brings us to uh, the Ratmen. So we are officially in combat now. And the one nearest, the one that you just stabbed, uh, Bragadine goes, <gasps> starts screaming um, and tries to get away from you. You have a free action if you'd like to try to stab it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try and. Uh... Oh, yes. I rolled a nine. Five levels, okay. Four levels of success. Four levels of success. You... Oh, wait. Five levels because I have momentum. Yeah. So you, as it's getting away, you easily. Just thrust the sword straight through its back. It pops out of its its little chest. Just, you pull it free. And it falls dead at your feet. Um, there's one more that's eerily close to Marius Wolf that is going to try to sc- scramble away. So you get an opportunity attack as well. Ooh, okay. It's going to try to dodge. Probably not going to work. Uh, it's a 16 out of 80. Yeah, definitely not. Um, how much damage is that? Because I think you're going to kill him in one hit. <laughs> uh, that is... 16 damage. You know, I can add on another. Uh, if... You don't need to. As he okay. tries, to, as he tries to, to run away, you reach out and grab him by his, by his head. As he, <laughs> and kind of re- lift him off the floor for a second and squeeze till it just turns to pulp and you're... And you're like oh, iron like grasp and he ah, he goes still. The two remaining rat men look horrified. <laughs> and they back up. Um they're not within range of anybody. And between the two of them, they have this comically large Jezile. It's about it's about six feet long. Oh god. And <laughs> one of them is holding the the end of it, and it looks like it had like a palaquin shield it was resting on, but it's dropped the shield in its retreat. So it's just holding it with its hands, holding it up, and the one in the back is holding the trigger. And let me roll a d4 here. Oh no. Oh. Let's see here. That's gonna Daniel. be Daniel. Daniel. That's gonna be Marius. <laughs> it's gonna be Marius. Oh, oh, nice. oh no. <laughs> Holy shit! I rolled an eleven on the sh- on the shot. Oh, oh yes! No Holy shit! Oh, Let's see here. No. Let's see where ninety hits. Let's see if you got any armor in this spot. Yeah, um, this is hit first. Uh, right leg. Uh, I got a mithril greave. I don't know if I do. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I do. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll have to use my fate point. It's, it's too it's too big of a weapon. Well, well before yeah, you use your fate it. point, before you use it, let's just see how much damage yeah. it is, you know. Let's okay, just, okay. Let's just see. Let's just see. All right. Okay, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, All right. Um, it, boom, just charges for 28 damage. Yeah, I'm going to have to use fate point. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> his, his thunderous boom goes out, and for a moment there, Marius, you see your leg just disintegrate from Shit. around the hip down, and then somehow, it's almost like you see it explode off your body, and you, ah, and then it like rewinds as you see the warpstone bullet pull back, and your leg reforms. And then somehow your leg just shifts a few, just a few inches to the left. And the round passes harmlessly by you, still with a thunderous boom. 
And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode of Rise of the Forsaken. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> you <laughs> almost did it. You almost did it. You almost got him before it can happen. Ugh. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, something that can take out Marius in a single shot. You know, that's that's pretty powerful. Jezile. Marius has Jezile. a lot of help. You've got, I will say, you guys have seen the handiwork of these several times. Um, so, true. yeah. They put holes in people. Yeah, they were like <laughs> destroying uh, Gores and stuff like that, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were killing Chaos Warriors. So, yes. Um, but, yeah. So that uh yeah that's our game for the night so um just like we normally do favorite moments from the cast and crew you know let's start with old mary's wolf oh gee i don't know uh i like the uh the horror i guess the the mm, monster oh, yeah yeah you the did the sludge and the stew <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. like that i was pretty, i wasn't expecting that you know um i also enjoyed our you know getting to know Kretsch. Um, why? Why he was still alive? Why he was still alive? You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know who, who good old Crutch. We don't get to talk to Skaven very often, you know. So That's true. I feel like true. it was interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. How about uh, how about mm. old Seamus McCree? Shame favorite moments of the night, sir. Mm. Uh, I just enjoy the uh, the Skaven, you know, Warren or Undercity, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it is, you know, it's one of my favorite factions. So it's nice, it's nice to to see, you know, Graciers and Storm Vermin and Rat Ogres. You know, I can't wait to get oh, my hands yeah. on a Warp Lock. Warp Lock oh, is a right at your feet. I would love mm. to see you use it by yourself. Oh. <laughs> to see you wield a, a six foot gun. It's gonna oh, be we're amazing. gonna try. Yeah, I know you're going to try. I know you are. Uh, so that brings us to Mr. Galactic. Favorite moment, uh, sir, my, for Bragadine? My, my favorite part was uh, sending uh, Jacques off to uh, Thaggy to uh, to retrieve a uh, army of 70 oh, yeah? dwarf warriors to save mm. us, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 or I could be dreaming. Mm-hmm. Um no, Possibly. the thought of that Bragadine actually has two cowardly pistols and, and may have may maybe forced to use them. Uh but honestly, uh I'll I'll agree with uh with uh Jumbo Smooth that the uh the uh, Scritch, was that his name? Yeah, I uh, I kinda enjoyed that too. That was that was a lot of fun actually. Trying to talk to him inside his box before he slashed me with mm. a dagger with his tail. Old, old Cretch. Gotcha. Cretch. There we go. Chris got you. But yes, um, for me personally, I mean, I enjoyed quite a bit of it. Not going to lie here. Um, there's more in store. Don't worry. I've got so much more in store for you. It's going to be great, guys. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> and j- just know that, you know. Oh, it always is. The, the jazz I'll ring now is not going to bring anything bad upon you. It's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, oh, it's gonna sure be fine, guys. guys. I'm surprised you saw it to be honest with you because they were actually pretty well hidden um I didn't e- I didn't expect you guys to even see them I thought this was gonna come up uh as you guys were coming down so you it, you did good on that front so at least you saw it early so shot by it yeah that would have been real bad <laughs> Get surprise uh, shot in the back point, uh, <laughs> point. yeah it's true I mean Marys did have to use a fate point already so we'll see how this goes guys but man I am excited for the uh, for the next episode um, I do have a viewer decision for for all of those out there and it's it's a somewhat important one um, and by somewhat I mean it's probably very important I need to know who or what is down in the cages below as far as uh, a captive of the foul Thagaraki, the Skaven, down below. There may or may not be a special cell with someone or something in it. So I would like to uh, hear people's thoughts on that. It has to be something, uh, something reasonable. 
don't say like, oh, techless is in a cell down there or something. That's ridiculous. So <laughs> it's it's got to be something within reason. Just let yeah, me know. Yeah. yeah, you know. That, that's, exactly. that's totally doable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah completely. <laughs> completely doable. So just let me know, you know. Kill all these gaming. Exactly. So let me know what, what, who or what they have imprisoned in a special cell down there. And we will we will take it from there. So, man, awesome game, guys. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope all of you guys out there did as well listening. Do make sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It um, it definitely helps the game out. Helps us get more exposed to uh, to more people, and just uh, just spreads the word. So, thank you very much. Make sure to leave a comment for the viewer decision. We do enjoy your comments, even if you um, don't want to vote. You know, just leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the game. So, as usual, I've been Jumbo Thick. Thank you for watching, and we are all looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.